Hey everybody, Jim here. I am in uh, Akihabara right now. It's um, the evening, getting dark. It's actually cloudy and kind of gloomy all day today. Um, but I'm in Akihabara right now to go to a Tsurugayo. I actually haven't been in before. I've always overlooked it, I guess. Um, but we're sort of on the other side. The station is right over on the other side of these buildings. Uh, so there's a Tsurugaya right next to Akihabara Station. And so that's where we are going right now. Uh, I was just at the Akihabara container a little earlier. Uh, checking out the latest pop-up shop. And uh, after that I figured it's... Uh, Time to go maybe look for some games. See what they got at Sudagaya. See if I can pick anything up for myself. And uh, the old Patrons. Uh, so yeah, the station is right over there, the Electric Town exit. So it's uh, right over here. It's actually right there down the street. Nice Sudagaya. Right next to the Karaoke Khan, which is always a good time. And right next to this uh, figure shop, something or other figure DVD. Um, but here we got uh, Sudagaya specialty store, so they're gonna have figures and anime stuff, all kinds of things. But we are here for that. Basement 1F, the game floor. That's where we wanna go. Let's go to the game floor. All right. Surugaya by the station, by Akihabara Station. Uh, pretty cool, although the layout was a little odd, as uh, it said outside. As I'm squeezing through these aisles, that's something you're going to see a lot of. Uh, squeezing through places um, there's like ps4 and whatever on the first floor but you got to go down into the basement if you want some of that retro game stuff so right here actually just on the walls along the um, the uh, staircase here are all these Famicom and Super Famicom loose carts uh, so they really had to make the most of the space they have available in this shop which um, you know, they, they give it a valiant effort as we're looking at uh, all these uh, loose cards. Got the Golgo 13 and the Pac-Man and Double Dragon and all that cool stuff. Um, so yeah, lots and lots of loose cards lining the walls. Uh, because as we get, uh, you know, really down into the basement, uh, you're going to see just how uh, cramped it can be. Um, but among these loose cards was, you know, some pretty cool stuff we've been... You know, looking at it, there's, you know, Variable Geo, there's Splatterhouse, Wanpaku, Graffiti, uh, stuff like Mappy Kids and things like that. So lots and lots of um, loose carts and uh, priced pretty well. You know, you can see someone like four bucks, um, you know, six bucks, stuff like that. For the more common stuff, like East 5 there, 2310, it's a little up there. 1100 for Rockman 7, like 700 for Ranma, 1650 for Final Fight 2. If I'm moving a little quickly, um, it's because, uh, like I said, I'm literally on the stairs. Uh, so as people want to go up and down the stairs, uh, I'm kind of a nuisance, <laughs> uh, blocking, blocking people's paths. Um, so yeah, if I move a little quickly in this video, it is because uh, as we look in the case, the, uh, the, the big money case, there's, uh, Violinist of Hamelin there. That's a great game. Lots of other good stuff in there. And then, uh, look down that aisle. You can see it's it's really narrow. Like maybe you can't appreciate it just watching the video. Um, as we're gonna look at a whole bunch of PlayStation games here, like Tron Bond, Hermie Hopperhead, and other stuff. Uh, right there, you can see they're labeled as like so. This section is action games. So I like that. I love it when sections are labeled by genre because you don't always want to just go through everything alphabetically if you don't necessarily have a specific game in mind you're looking for. But if in your head you're just like, I want some fighting games, or I want an action game, or a shoot 'em up, 
Um, it's great when the sections are labeled by genre. It's very convenient. Anyway, uh, the shop, um, as we're looking at the shelves here, you can see it's a very well-stocked shop. Um, but it is just unfortunate that all of the games had to be crammed down into the basement to make room for all of the other stuff that Sudagaya has, you know, like figures, anime, and pornography. Um, as we look at some, uh, some copies of Metal Slug and Metal Slug X, very cool, with varying covers. Um, so all of the games, uh, down in the basement, and so it's just, it's super cramped. They have to make the most of the space. Niketsu Oyako, uh, which was a launch title for the PlayStation, actually. Really great beat em up. I like it a lot. I've covered it in the past. Um, but yeah, we're just looking at floor to ceiling uh, PlayStation games here. Um, and they had lots of stuff. Again, you know, here's our fighting game section. So we got Vampire Savior EX Edition, the original Vampire, the Night Warriors. That's very cool. Galaxy Fight. 2,000 yen for the PlayStation version. I'm not the biggest Galaxy Fight fan, actually. Uh, some of the KOF games as well. And um, Samurai Spirits. And uh, Rival Schools, 800 yen. That ain't so bad. 400 for Street Fighter Zero Two. That's nice. Can't go wrong with that. Um, so, yeah. Lots and lots of uh, PS1 games here. Most of them priced um, fairly well. Bloody Roar, 770. I haven't played Bloody Roar in a long time. That's a series I need to revisit. And uh, yeah, here, labeled as shooting. So this is the shooting section with all the shoot 'em ups like Gradius Gaiden, great game. And uh, G Darius, also a uh, fantastic shooter. Strikers 1945, of course. Uh, you might know that I love uh, that series of games. We got Sexy Parodius, which is a great game too, but it's 7370. And uh, Sonic Swing Special, that's about 50 bucks or so. Um, so some of the games are like priced super cheap. Like you saw like 400 yen for Street Fighter and stuff like that. That's all really uh, nice and reasonable, but uh, not everything is. Also, when you see these little th 360 turns, that's really um, <laughs> tough. I mean, that's why I'm kind of just like walking backwards. Um, as we look at some PS2 games, including Knights, which it's my understanding that the Japanese version of Knights into Dreams for the PS2 um, that's a Japan exclusive, which I did not know until recently. Um, but yeah, lots of good stuff here on the PS2. Again, most of it priced uh, fairly well, because PS1 and PS2 games are just, like, you know, super abundant. Like, they're everywhere. You can't walk outside without tripping over some some PS2 games. Now, we've got a bunch of nice fighters here, including Garuden, Breakblow, Fist or Twist, for like 40 bucks. Um, so yeah, just lots and lots of, uh, PS1, PS2, basically this whole aisle, just nothing but PlayStation stuff. Sengoku Basara Cross, great fighting game by Arc System Works. Uh, as is this, Hokuto no Ken for 4290. Uh, one of my favorite Arc System Works fighters, actually. And then as you can see, people piling into, uh, the aisle here. So I got people coming up behind me. So yeah, and then as we swing around the corner again... Not a lot of space, um, but this aisle had uh, pretty much all Nintendo stuff, and it was uh, mostly all their box stuff. So boxed um, GBA and Game Boy and that kind of thing, um, like some Pokemon. But for the most part, lots of boxed uh, Famicom and Super Famicom. And I think I actually uh, did end up picking up something out of this aisle for myself. Um, usually when I go to Sudagaya, I'm buying up things, uh, for other people. Uh, not necessarily for myself so much. Uh, but here I did pick up, I believe, at least one game for myself. And a handful of other things for other people. Um, but yeah, so look at all this. Just piled high. Um, we got some Dragon Ball Z and stuff. So that's the thing about, um, this section with all the boxed games. I mean, they're, they're really, um, just piled up. Again, like, floor to ceiling. Um, so you're gonna, you know, maybe do a little bit of digging, be a little, um, be a little thorough. Um, but they had some really great games in here. Uh, Three by Three Eyes, I remember that's one of the games I actually emulated way back in the day on, like, ZSNES, just because I wanted to, you know, because I like the anime. I was like, man, I really want to, uh, play a video game based on Three by Three Eyes, and then I couldn't, I couldn't play it, I couldn't read a word of Japanese. But I gave it a shot, at least. 
Uh, some Gambare Goemon. I think that's actually one of the Goemon uh, side games. I don't know. Um, there are a bunch of Goemon games on the Super Famicom. Uh, some of which I've recently been getting into. Art of Fighting and uh, some Super Street Fighter 2. Uh, for $16.50. But it's boxed and in really good shape. And uh, some uh, Poppin' Twinby. Which is a shoot 'em up I like a lot. That's twenty six forty, and again, complete and in really good shape. So that's kind of, you know, Sudagaya. Not always the cheapest prices. As we look at some nice Parodius there, not always the lowest prices. Sometimes really good prices. Sometimes a little high. Nineteen hundred for Tokyo uh, Mickey's Tokyo Disney Adventure, and uh, that's not so bad. Um, but uh, mostly, what you're gonna find if you're looking for box stuff, you're gonna find things in pretty good condition. Forty five ten. For Goemon 2, which I picked up recently, I picked it up at a Mandai Shoten, but I think I picked it up for like half that price. Um, but then again, that's Mandai Shoten. That's not Sudagaya. Sudagaya kind of, you know, when it comes to, you know, this kind of stuff, the retro games and all that, they sort of cater to the collectors among us. Uh, and I picked up this game actually, Gegege no Kitaro, because uh, I had never tried it before, but uh, was interested. Always. Looked uh, pretty cool to me. And the animated series is, is pretty sweet too. And uh, Gambari Goemon 3 for 4070 That's one I actually have not played yet. I'm actually just trying to finish Goemon 2. And then I will move on to Goemon 3. Um, but yeah, so just appreciate the vastness. Just box upon box upon box. So many games. Uh, and a Gegege no Kitaro. Uh, Famicom game. I think there are a couple of those actually. Rockman 6, 8250. That's quite a lot. Um, and uh, Kunio Kun Soccer. So, yeah, lots of uh, boxed Famicom games here in uh, pretty good condition. Usually, when I'm on these like shopping trips, picking up lots of stuff, um, boxed games are not always the thing I'm looking for. Like, if I'm looking for something for myself, like, you know, for the collection. Or if like I'm picking up something for someone who specifies that they really want box stuff, um, most people just want loose cards because they don't want to, you know, spin an arm and a leg. They're not that concerned about boxes and manuals. They just want to play those games. Um, some Hokuto no Ken, Ninja Ryukenden, all kinds of nice games here. Um, and Rockman Four for 6380. See, that's oh, I think that's quite a lot though for. The Rockman games, even if they are boxed, they should be like maybe like 15 20% less than that. Anyway, that's uh, this aisle here with all the Nintendo stuff. And then, oh, a cut, because I'm in a different aisle, an even more cramped aisle. So there's all these Mega Drive games here that I don't really get a chance to dig through just because I'm not the only person in the aisle and I can't be shoving people out of the way. Excuse me, ma'am, I'm making a YouTube video. Stop your shopping so I can. <laughs> Uh, film these games. No, no, can't do that. But we're looking at all these PC Engine games, which is, uh, which that's okay with me. Uh, but this aisle had uh, a lot of the stuff I've been more interested in as of late. And, uh, these are, I don't know, like heavy on the, um, like the hardcore collectors, uh, the stuff in this aisle. So, like PC Engine, Sega Saturn, Dreamcast, Mega Drive. Um, I get a lot of requests for stuff like that. So, we're looking at a whole bunch of Saturn games here. Saturn Fighters 5390 for Advanced Variable Geo. Which I think is quite a lot. Especially when Dead or Alive is 660. I think the Saturn port of Dead or Alive is a better game by far than Advanced Variable Geo. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Fantastic fighter. And uh, Garou, Mark of the Wolves for 3850. And it's complete with the spine card and everything. So that's nice. We got some Guilty Gear... Got all kinds of good stuff. King of Fighters 2000. Um, again, yeah, these are uh, consoles that you know, I get a lot of requests for because Dreamcast, Saturn, PC Engine. Um, Dreamcast and Saturn in particular have lots of fighting games and lots of shoot 'em ups. Stuff like this, like Layer Section and Darius Gaiden, which is fantastic. And uh, Metal Black, which is 7,500 yen. It's an expensive shooter. It's one I don't own um, because it's, you know, it's a pricey game. But I would like to uh, give it a shot just because 
You know, I love my Saturn shooters, like Sokyo Gurentai, for example, which is one of my favorites, as a matter of fact. Uh, that is a really good shoot 'em up uh, that I, uh, I go back to quite often, as is the game Tengoku, Game Paradise. Another very fun shooter, and a bunch of these I've actually covered on the channel, or you can just go look up. I mean, there's no end to all of the um, reviews and gameplay footage. 26, 180 for Steam Hearts. Good lord, that's a lot. I think it was like 80 bucks when I picked it up a few years ago. Uh, so that's one that is quite pricey. I might have just gotten lucky when I, I found it for cheap, but. Uh, and 900 for Macross. Do you remember Love? Which is a uh, fun shooter in its own right. And uh, a nice proper copy of Layer Section. Which, Layer Section is one of my favorite Saturn shooters as well. Very simple gameplay. But very fun. Beautiful graphics. Great sound design. Can't go wrong with that. And we got some other uh, Capcom fighters on the Saturn over here. Stuff like X-Men, Children of the Atom, Vampire Hunter. All this great Capcom stuff. I uh, just can't go wrong with any of that. And uh, Golden Axe, The Duel. This is always uh, fun to come across. Uh, but anyway, as we take a quick little look at some of these uh, superfluous Streamcast games down here, um, that's about it. Uh, again, really cramped, so I was kind of quick, you know, not trying to like block people, hold up their shopping and stuff. But I uh, had some fun looking around in Sudagaya, grabbed some games. Anyway, let's uh, wrap it up, take it outside. Okay, so that is the uh, Sudagaya, which is really right right next to the station. The station's right over there. Um, pretty cool. Uh, the games, lots and lots of games. Prices are kind of um, from the reasonable side to kind of middle of the road, I would say. And um, the only problem was it was really really cramped um there's like shit tons of games but like nowhere to stand like when i wanted to look in the aisle with all the sega and pc engine games in it uh it took a while before i could actually get in there because there were three guys already in the aisle looking at games so you literally could not fit another person in that aisle so um great selection of games prices weren't so bad um but it is like Oh, good lord, it's cramped. It's uncomfortable in there and hot. Uh, but anyway, I actually did end up picking up a game for myself. A uh, Super Famicom game, which uh, I'll be going home and trying out. Picked up Gege Gege no Kitaro. So it should be pretty sweet. And uh, yeah, so now I gotta go do whatever it is I'm gonna do next. Probably get some food because I'm hungry and it's, as you can see, it's getting late. Uh, but anyway, thanks for. Uh, watching. I hope you enjoyed this really cramped, quick little game hunting video at uh, Sudagaya. And uh, until next time, happy holidays everybody. Uh, and uh, I'll see you then. Take care. Goodbye.